Welcome to all who seek knowledge and truth. I am Siddhartha Gautama, the one who you know today as Buddha. I have been called here today from the mist of ancient times to enlighten you on the subject of death and dying. Before we begin to discuss death and dying, I shall tell the tale of my life and teachings that have spread throughout the region you now refer to as Asia. My journey began in India around the time of the late 5th century BCE. I was born the son of a warrior prince and all earthly desires were bestowed on me. I was not content with this life after observing the suffering and despair of my fellow human beings. At the age of 29 years I began my spiritual journey as an ascetic seeking solutions to the struggles of human existence. Many trials confronted me as I practiced extreme self-denial. As I paused one day to meditate under the Bodhi tree, the tree of knowledge, I reached enlightenment and taught my followers my newfound spiritual understanding. My teachings were very much opposite to the prevailing Hindu faith. The Hindu faith restricts performance of religious functions to the Brahmin caste, the priests, whereas my teachings are accessible to all who wish to seek enlightenment. The teachings that I pass along to others are based in these four noble truths. In order to understand these, you need to understand me. I believe life as we live it is full of pleasures and pains of the body and mind. Pleasure is inevitably tied to suffering since we suffer from wanting them, wanting them to continue, and wanting pain to go so pleasure can come. With this in mind, these are the four noble truths. 1. All living things suffer. 2. The origin of suffering is desire, desire for material things. 3. Desire can be overcome. 4. There is a path that leads to the release from desire. That pathway is called the Eightfold Path. Right views, right intentions, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right concentration, and right ecstasy. The Eightfold Path is pervaded by the middle way which characterizes my life. The middle way represents a rejection of all extremes of thought, emotion, action, and lifestyle. Rather than either severe mortification of the body or a life of indulgence in pleasure, I advocate a moderate balance in life and the cultivation of mental and emotional strength through meditation and morality. Hey, how about that? That time machine worked. I was able to pluck Buddha from his time to our time so we could chat. He said a lot of interesting things about his life, and he wanted me to tell you more about his experiences that would lead to better understanding of death and dying. Before death and dying, let us take a look at the social, emotional, cognitive, and physical aspects of Buddha's teachings. Socially, Buddha was very interactive with and accepted all followers in search of meaning and inner peace and encouraged his students to do the same. Emotionally, Buddha's attitudes towards death and dying are much less distressing than our modern views are. Cognitive-wise, meditation clears the mind of useless thoughts and sharpens focus on tasks to be completed. And physically, meditation is useful in helping control breath, lowering blood pressure, and relieving tension in our muscles. So what is, again, what does all this have to do with death and dying? As with the Hindu teachings, 
Buddha believed the existence is a cycle of life and death. This cycle is commonly known as reincarnation. The Buddha believed that this cycle could only be broken by teaching complete detachment from worldly cares. Well, then one soul could be released into nirvana, an indescribable state of total transcendence. Gautama traveled, preached the Dharma, which is the sacred truth, and became recognized as the Buddha, or the Enlightened One. While the Buddha was engaged with his students one day, he asked them a question. How often do you think about death, he asked. One student said, I contemplate death every day. Another stated, I contemplate death with each mouthful that I eat during meals. To both of these, Buddha replied, that's not good enough. To a third monk he asked, what about you? This one replied with, I contemplate death with each inhalation and each exhalation. That is it. That is all it takes. The inhalation comes in, it goes out, and one day it won't come in again. That is all there is between you and death. Buddha considered this a very important part of meditation and training towards becoming more wise and more peaceful. Why is it that this seemingly morbid approach is encouraged? Because we fear death, have a tendency to avoid it, and a reluctance to come face to face with this reality. Death is very much a part of life. It comes to everyone. No one can escape it. All things that are born must die. From our conception to growing old, it all leads to one thing death. In our society today, we are encouraged to avoid death and live as if we were never going to die. We all know we're going to die, yet we act as if it's never going to happen. As long as there is a fear of death, we never truly live. The contemplation of death has three benefits. It relieves fear, brings a new quality to our lives, enabling us to live with proper values, and it enables us to die a good death. Let us take a minute now to contemplate on and draw your own conclusions from this presentation and the four statements that are showing up on this slide. We hope you all have all enjoyed it. Thank you.